going on everyone? It's Jacqueline here from Nothing But Tech. Hope you guys are all doing well. Welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about the Range Rover Evoque. I've been driving this car for around a year now. My first video on it was made in June of last year. So it's been a long time coming, but I finally feel like I have enough thoughts on it to make a comprehensive and intelligent review about it. So I'm excited to talk about it today. I want to thank Range Rover Parsippany for making this video possible. They're not influencing any of the opinions in this video, but they just kind of facilitated the car for it. So thank you to them. They're an awesome dealership. If you want to buy a Range Rover, highly would recommend using Range Rover Parsippany dealership. All right, so let's dive into this video. So starting out with the design, this was the first thing that really attracted me to the Range Rover Evoque. I just love the design of it. From the front and the side, it looks hot. The headlights are in a really cool configuration, which looks awesome at night. There's a light that goes on at night to illuminate what the car actually looks like, like a silhouette of the car. It's just a small thing that really goes a long way. The inside is a really nice interior as well with this cool material on the dashboard and a nice padded wheel, which is not only really comfortable to drive with, but it also looks really good. The mirrors on the side look good. The back seat looks good. This is, in my opinion, the best looking SUV on the market. My least favorite angle of this car is from the back. It looks like a little smashed in almost, but every other angle of this car looks really, really good. The interior is also not too cluttered. Um, we're seeing two ends of the spectrum. So you have like your Tesla Model 3 with one wheel and one screen, and then you have cars uh, like a Mercedes car, an Audi car, which are like covered in buttons and decisions that you have to make. But in this car, I feel like everything is pretty intuitive and clean. There's a big touch screen, which will help you with your navigation, your media, you can turn it into like a valet mode when you're giving your car over. You can control a lot of things on there, calling someone. And then below that, you have your air conditioning control. So I still actually prefer uh, tactile buttons for controlling an air conditioning system rather than on the screen. So I like that it's there. Each person can individually control their temperature. You can also turn on seat warmers. And then there's also on the wheel, a wheel warmer. This is the most underrated feature. I love it. Even when it's not like cold in the car, it still feels really nice when you're driving. There's also an interesting system for changing your drive mode. So this little like console pops up and then you twist it. It takes a little while to get used to if you're in a different car previously. And I think that on their newer Range Rover Evoque, they're actually not going to use the system anymore and I like it and I think it looks pretty aesthetically cool but what I have noticed is at times it gets kind of stuck you really have to like slam down on the brake and then give it a second to move but when it works it looks really cool and it also pops up and pops down depending on if you're turning the car on or off again it's all the little details that they really got right that make this car feel like a very premium experience the seats are also padded and they feel pretty comfortable there's adjustments of lumbar support sitting forward or backwards there's a bunch of different controls and then you also have a setting where you can program in not only what position you like as driver number one, but also the position of your mirrors. So you've probably had this happen to you before where you get all your mirrors and everything set up and then all of a sudden someone much taller or shorter than you gets in the car. And then when you get back in the car, you're like, what happened here? I can't see anything. Now this will just keep your settings so you don't have to try to find the perfect position every time you use a car. So this is a great feature if you're gonna have multiple people driving the same car. In terms of the tech included in the car, you have an automatic start via the app. Uh, and I've been using the app on iPhone and it works pretty well. You can also track your journeys. Then you can also control the temperature of the car in this as well. And then it'll also tell you the condition of the car. So if you need to get service or if there's something wrong with the engine or stuff like that. And this brings me to my point about reliability. Range Rovers are known for not being the most reliable cars on the market. Like I don't think that you buy a Range Rover because you want like a car that's not gonna need a ton of service and stuff like that. Uh, and I would say that that kind of holds true with my experience. So far, up until like this point, there haven't been any major, major issues, but I have like minor things where like the engine light will go on or I'll have to get fluid checked. Small things like that, which just kind of make the experience a little bit more annoying. You just want to be able to use your car and not always have to bring it into the shop. So that is something that I will note. I don't know if this is something that's felt universally, but at least in my personal experience, there have been a lot of minor things that need to be fixed in just this first year of using it. Okay, and then the, I guess the most important thing would obviously be the driving experience. So what I would say here is that it's really good. So I don't do really any off-roading, but this is a vehicle that can be used in a lot of off-road scenarios, which is awesome. And they have a lot of content on like their social media of people using their Range Rovers off-road. So I'm gonna link that in the description down below if you wanna see that. But for me, just like standard driving, 
it's been a pretty positive experience. The straight line pickup is not ideal, but once it gets started, it's able to maintain that speed and feel pretty comfortable. When I'm driving it, I feel like I have really good control over the vehicle in terms of like the wheel. It also feels really comfortable. Some cars, the wheel doesn't have a lot of padding and you can get fatigued on longer rides. I don't experience that here at all. The navigation also pairs really well when driving. So if you plug in an address on the little screen in the middle behind the wheel, it will show you when you have a turn coming up so you don't really have to take your eyes fully off the road. That's nice. When you're driving and you're listening to an audiobook or music, the speaker system is awesome. All the audio sounds clear. There's definitely a lot of bass and it can get really, really loud. All positive there. The open roof makes the car feel very spacious, which is nice because you actually do not have a lot of space in the back. I'm about 5'8" and if there's a taller driver in the front seat and I'm sitting right behind them, I don't have a ton of legroom. It's not the end of the world for short trips, but for longer trips, I can see that kind of being a little bit fatiguing. So if you're planning on taking road trips with a lot of adults, this might not be the car for you. However, if you have younger kids, they'll definitely be able to comfortably sit in the back. There's three seats and in the front, you can sit in a pretty comfortable position while the younger kids will still have a lot of room. The two seats in the front are extremely comfortable. The trunk is also really good in this car, so you can put a lot of stuff in the back while still having pretty good visibility because it's a big space. In terms of the infotainment system, I already touched on this, but the Bluetooth works really well. My phone just pairs right away. And the buttons on the steering wheel can ensure that you don't have to take your hands off the wheel to activate voice assistant or answer a phone call or do volume adjustment. It's all in the perfect position where you can do it while still keeping your eyes on the road and driving. So that's kind of been my experience with it. It's been a really, really fun vehicle to use. It's a great looking car. Um, and it's been really nice to drive as well. The only drawback that I really would noticeably see with it is if you have a lot of people that are always gonna be sitting in the back, it's not the most room. You might wanna look at the uh, one car up from the Range Rover Evoque, which will have a little bit more room in the back. And then the other thing is that, at least in my experience, it does seem to need maintenance more often than you would expect for a brand new car. Not huge issues, at least up until now, but small things that you still need to bring in to get checked out. That's it though for this video. If you enjoyed it, leave a like. Car videos are a lot harder than I thought to shoot. Like I knew it would be difficult, but this was a different level. So major props to all the amazing car channels out there. Subscribe if you like this video, check out another video and leave a comment what you think on the Range Rover Evoque. I'll catch you all in the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye.